Hi guys, welcome. Well, it's gone really automated. In this session, we are going to discuss on a device which is going to really help us in automation. Yes, we are going to discuss on the topic photo transistor. The menu for the session will start with the principle of operation. We will get into the construction of a photo transistor, understand the schematic symbol representation, working of photo transistor with two cases case 1 when light falls on the photo transistor case 2 when light does not fall on it we will draw the characteristic curve we will list down the advantages disadvantages and applications of photo transistor we will move on to the principle of a uh, photo transistor the principle of operation of a photo transistor is very very similar to that of a photo diode so photo transistor is a light detector which is able to convert light energy into electrical energy. So the photodiode's working principle is also the same. So a light detector which is able to convert light energy to electrical energy. So this is the working principle of a phototransistor. So then what is the difference between a phototransistor and a photodiode? A phototransistor is equal to a photodiode plus a transistor amplifier. So this is what the phototransistor is and we will move on to the construction part of the phototransistor. Phototransistor is a normal BJT. As a normal BJT has three layers, phototransistor also has three layers, emitter, base and collector. The difference between uh, the normal BJT and the phototransistor is that the width or rather the region of base and collector are larger when compared to the normal BJT. Moreover, you do have a lens provision in a phototransistor which will focus the incident light on the base collector junction. Right? So this is uh, this is the construction of, an, of a phototransistor. We will move on to the schematic symbol representation, having this as base. So the schematic symbol is drawn like this. So this is going to be your collector, this is going to be your base, and sorry, so this is going to be your emitter, and this is going to be your base. Right? And light is going to be made to fall on the collector collector base junction so this is going to be the schematic symbol representation of your phototransistor out of these three terminals we are going to use only two terminals the emitter and the collector. The base is going to be kept open and we are going to make it work under common emitter configuration. You can make it work under two different configurations, both common collector and common emitter. The most traditional way, conventional uh, configuration is your common emitter. We will move on to the working uh, principle of a phototransistor. Uh, so this is how uh, it is connected, the biasing, so the phototransistor is going to work only in reverse bias. So the biasing arrangement is made in this way and as said earlier, out of the three terminals, we are going to use only two terminals. One is the emitter, the other one is the collector and the base is kept open. So light is made, to, so we are going to uh, understand uh, the working of uh, the phototransistor in the two cases. The first case that we have taken is when light falls. This is the first case that we will check. So, we have studied already, when light is incident on a junction, it has enough energy to knock out electrons from the valence shell, which means that there are, there are carriers that are, that are developed because, that are generated because of the light incident on the junction. So, more number of carriers are generated inside your base because of the light incident on the junction. 
and what happens as a result? Because of this reverse bias and because of the charge carriers getting developed inside your base, there is more number of charge carriers flowing into the collector and as a result the collector current increases. So this is what is going to happen when light is incident on the base collector junction and the reverse bias is given to your, given to your phototransistor. We can understand this concept with the help of a small equation. So the collector current keeping the base open, base open and under common emitter configuration, right? The collector current is given by IC is equal to beta plus 1 into ICO, the reverse saturation current plus beta into IB. As the base is open, IB equal to 0. And so this equation becomes IC is equal to beta plus 1 into ICO. Okay, so this is going to be your collector current, right? And when light is made to fall on the base collector junction, charge carriers are developed, and so more number of carriers are moved to the collector because of the reverse bias. And as a result, there is going to be a current that is going to be generated and we will say it as I lambda because of light. So this is the current that is going to be produced. And so this equation changes to beta plus 1 into, so this is also a current that is going to be because of minority carriers. Okay. And so this could be written as ICO plus I lambda which is I C I lambda here fine so this is going to be an equation and from this equation we could know we could infer that when there is a current because of this incident light your collector current increases to a larger extent so this is how uh, the working principle could be explained for case number one to just have a small summary, right? Uh, we will just have a small link. Light falls. This light will have enough energy to knock out electrons from the uh, outermost shell, and as a result, you will have charge carriers getting developed in the base, right? And in the base, charge carriers increases. And because of the reverse bias, right, the collector current increases. So this is just a, a short summary of what really happens when light is incident on the base collector junction. We will now uh, understand the working principle uh, or working operation of a phototransistor when light does not fall on it. And then I will just have a small comparison after that. Uh, so this is a, a diagram which illustrates when light does not fall on the phototransistor. Uh, so there are, uh, so this is an NPN transistor where inside the base the electrons form the minority carriers and when a reverse bias is given, right, due to thermally generated carriers as well as the minority carriers present over here, there is going to be a reverse saturation current that is going to flow, right, and that reverse saturation current is going to be in terms or other in terms of nanoamperes. And this current is what we call it as a dark current because this is a current that is going to be flowing in the absence of light. So even in the absence of light, there is going to be a small current, a reverse saturation current that is going to flow because of the thermally generated minority carriers. We call that current to be dark current. Fine? Right. So we will just have a small uh, recap of what we had seen uh, when light falls on the base collector junction, right? So even if light does not fall, there is going to be a current that is going to flow, reverse saturation current, and that is what we call it as ICO in the equation. Fine? Right. When light is made to fall on it and it has enough energy to knock out electrons, and so you will have more number of electrons which are minority carriers inside the base. Right? So more number of electrons that are going to be generated inside the base because of light. 
and so when reverse bias is given more number of charge carriers flow across the junction into the collector which produces a current ic which is nothing but which will be equal to beta plus 1 into ico plus i lambda where i lambda is the current that is going to be generated because of light so the current you could see that there is a drastic increase in current collector current because of the light incident of the base collector junction before getting into the characteristic we will just understand this very simple concept when the intensity of light is increased IC will increase because more number of minority carriers get, uh, get generated ok fine right so this is a curve we would have drawn for the output characteristics under common limiter configuration we would have drawn uh, curves for VCE against IC keeping IB to be constant right here the only difference the, the point which I want to derive is this is a curve right which will be very similar to that of the curve that we are going to draw here right the only difference would be instead of base current you will have good you will have the case is right you will have light intensity that's the only difference because because light is a factor which is going to produce more number of carriers inside the base right so instead of base you will have light that's the only difference between the curve that we have drawn here and the curve that we are going to draw for this phototransistor so this is also IC this is also VCE right the, uh, the reverse voltage that we are going to give and this is milliamp this is the collector current right and the current right and these are the curves which are drawn for different light intensities say this is going to be 0 lux right right so this will be 20 lux and this will be 40 lux right so this is this is the characteristic curve of a phototransistor next we'll move on to the advantages disadvantages and few applications of it we'll move on to the advantages of phototransistor the advantages are one it is able to produce more current and when you compare it with the photodiode the current that is produced will be 50 to 100 times larger right so this is one of the differences between a phototiode and a phototransistor we have already uh, known that phototransistor is equal to phototiode plus transistor amplifier the disadvantage of photodiode is that the output is going to be very very small that we had seen it in the earlier video right so whereas here in a photo, by using a phototransistor you can generate more current 50 to 100 times greater than that of a photodiode the second uh, advantage is that it is inexpensive and third it has a quick response time These are some of the advantages of uh, uh, phototransistor. Uh, the disadvantage being it is vulnerable to surges and spikes. This is one of the disadvantages of phototransistor. Uh, we will list down few applications of uh, phototransistor. The first application being, uh, as, it is, as it has the cap capability to detect light, it can be used in light detection systems. And as it can give instantaneous output, right, as the, as the, uh, as the response time is going to be very, very quick, uh, it has the ability to uh, quickly respond to the input and give the output instantaneously right and so it can be used in reading punched cards and third it can be used to read uh, a film on 
players, right? Uh, say for example, DVD players. Read the input rather. Read the input or DVD players. Okay. And fourth is you can use it in security systems, which falls in line with that of a photodiode, right? We had seen an example of an intrusion system using a photodiode. The same could be applied over here. And fifth is to detect objects. Detect, detect objects in, in or other it can be used in counting systems. So we had already discussed about automation, right? So in counting systems you can use, right? Uh, one simple uh, diagram to illustrate is, say for example you do have a conveyor belt and you do have a, a production uh, company which manufactures bottle, bottles, right? So when the bottles come in the conveyor belt and you could have a, a, a light source at one end of the uh, conveyor belt and the photo transistor at the other end of the conveyor belt. Right, and uh, uh, as it when the bottle moves, it, it breaks the path of the light. And once it breaks the path of the light, so this photo transistor could be connected uh, could be connected to a counter system, counter counter circuit, which automatically counts the number of bottles as and when the bottle uh, breaks the light path. Right. So these are few applications of uh, photo transistors. To just have a small recap, um, the, we, we had seen the principle of operation of uh, a photo transistor, which is nothing but uh, it's, it's a sensor which is able to convert light energy into electrical energy. We had seen the construction of it. Uh, so there is a special provision in a photo transistor, uh, which, is, which is the lens, which is going to focus the incident light on the base collector junction, right? And moreover, the base and the collector are going to be having a larger region when compared to a normal DJT. Uh, and we had seen uh, the working principle when light does not fall on the photo transistor. Uh, you do have a small reverse saturation current in terms of nano amperes flowing in the uh, flowing in the phototransistor. When light is made to fall on the uh, base collector junction, a uh, more number of minority carriers are generated inside the base, and uh, and and, uh, and as a result, the collector current drastically increases. So we have drawn the characteristic. Uh, we have seen uh, a few advantages and disadvantages of a phototransistor and uh, important applications of the same. Hope uh, and wish this uh, session would have been really beneficial to you and if you really like this video please subscribe, share your likes and do not forget to click the bell button. Thank you so much.